you know, I didn't have my struggles with it where I put it down, picked it up. Anybody who, who who's had an addiction to something, you know, of that magnitude completely understand. Nobody ever talks about like what you go through emotionally when you're fighting the demons and stuff like that. And I think DMX was one of them artists who did a great job at illustrating what that looks like to fight a demon. It's my children. Just looking at my children and be like, I gotta be here, I gotta be here for the long haul. That was the inspiration for me to put it down. I can't be vulnerable with everybody. Yeah. You know, granny gone. So, you know, I get vulnerable with that cup, man. Like that, that's, that's you know what I'm saying? Man? It's like you have a real relationship with whatever drug that, you know what I'm saying? You fighting, uh, we just gonna call them your demons. Whatever demon you fighting, you know, it ain't just, some people just look at it like it's a drug or whatever it is, but the person who dealing with that got a relationship with that. And it's one of my favorite topics. I like talking about it because I can relate to it a lot. You feel me? Even though I'm an alcoholic or alcohol addict, I was an addict and having serious addictions and uh, problems being addicted to a substance or alcohol. Well, sometimes even, you know, coochie could be an addiction. Me and my homie was talking about this. Uh, having sex and coochie can be an addiction as well because it's powerful and it take over your mind. You will put your whole life on hold to go get some coochie when you got to really go and do this. That's an addiction. But shout out Mazda, you feel me, for, for being open and talking about him kicking the cup. You feel me? Because, man, you can see it. You can see his face. You can see this brother like... You can see him healing. You can see his face. You know what I'm saying? He looking more healthy. He getting a little better. He paused. No dig. You know what I'm saying? He getting his color back. You know what I'm saying? You can go watch niggas' videos and see like, oh yeah, he on something. He always got a cup in his hand. He getting the gut. Dude, he look healthy now. He got healthy weight on him versus lean weight. You feel me? Versus codeine weight. You feel me? And a lot of niggas won't come out and talk about that because they be scared of uh, what people gonna say about, it. oh, you can't cut, bro, you weak, da, da, da. Man, let's stop that, bro. We healing broken men out here these days, so if you gotta take some type of drug, drink some type of liquor, or drink some type of substance in order for you to be okay with yourself and sit down to yourself, you got some inner healing to do. That's all I'm here to say. You fighting some battles and some demons that you not interpret in the correct way because you running from trauma or you running from a certain type of healing you gotta do so instead what we do is we mask them with other things drugs alcohol women money uh, uh always going out and being in people's face see the hardest thing it is for a dude to do as a man is sit down and see where you went wrong with your decision you feel me that's the hardest thing it is for men to do sometimes is sit down, sit with themselves and look at the decisions they made. That's why you see some men, they got to stay on the move. They got to stay on the go. They got to continue doing these certain things because they really running from themselves. So sometimes if you can't just sit in solitude and be like, let me sit and focus. Let me really relive my whole life and see where I went wrong. What's the reason for this? What's the cause for this? I can tell y'all this. A lot of times... When you see people running from things, I'm not even going to say people, but you see, since we healing broken men, a lot of times when you see men healing from things, they running from feeling the bad. They running from past traumas, whether it was being bullied, whether it was abuse, whether it was being abandoned, whether it was a, 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 a female that got away, um, being rejected by the world or by their family, which is, you know what I'm saying? I get into that at another day, but these be things people don't heal from. So they know how to mask you with other things. And once you get money, or even once you get money to have a lot of drugs, you attract a lot of other things and people. And then next thing you know, you go into all these places because y'all are meeting up on a social gathering that's centered around drugs, bad habits, or doing things. You know what I'm saying? I bet. To everybody out here, if you somebody with an addiction, if you stop that addiction today, most of your friends would disappear. Let me say that again. If you somebody who got an addiction, money is an addiction too. If you somebody with an addiction, if you stop that addiction today, most of your friends would disappear. Because y'all trauma bonded over the addiction.
not success, not money, not going somewhere farther in life, addiction. You feel me? And trauma bonding usually come from, we really suffering from the same problem, the same inner healing that we both running away from. So we run to each other because you understand me, I understand you, and we're going to get through this together. But y'all ain't getting through it together because y'all never dealing with it. So in order to deal with it, you got to sit down and deal with it. A lot of time it takes niggas to go to jail. This is how I look at it. It's two types of, 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 of bondages for men in the physical. You going to jail, and it's crazy because one going to lead to the other. You know what I'm saying? But if you go to jail, you're going to be forced to sit down and sit with yourself even if you secluded with a whole bunch of other men. Because when you're in your cell, you with just you, probably your cellie, but mostly you in your mind. That or mental bondage, which means you still in jail. Because if you imprisoned in your mind, it's just like you being in jail. That might be a lot to take on. You might be like, what did he talk about? What is he? I'm telling y'all, I'm giving y'all a real game. But it shouldn't take for you to go to jail to break out of your mental prison. If that makes sense. If you in bondage, if you in prison in your mind, you gonna probably go to jail as men. And we healing broken men. So if you imprisoned in your mind, you probably end up in jail or you probably be having them S word thoughts because you in jail in your mind. I know people, who they in their mind 24 seven, 23 and one solitary confinement. The only time they getting some peace is when they go take a shower or they having sex. Or they with their kid for an hour. It sound like prison, don't it? We talk about mentally. So if you never break out of that mentally, you know what I'm saying? You are in prison. You are imprisoned in your mind. And addiction, it keeps you there. It keeps you in prison in your mind. If you go to jail, you may stop taking all them drugs. So now you're forced to sit with yourself. We ain't talking about the people who gonna make sure they get these drugs while they in jail. We talk about the people who go to jail, get sober, get fat. And why you see a lot of niggas go to jail, eat them swole, they get fat. Because now they off them drugs. But you also got people who go to jail, but still be in prison in their mind while they in jail. So when they get out, they do the same things that leads them back to jail. I said... It all went into a, a good circle. If you pick up what I'm putting down, man, a lot of trauma bonding, man. A lot of a lot of a lot of trauma bonding is what you see going on. So before I end the video, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. But I'm gonna say this again. The moment you stop what you addicted to, most of your friends gonna disappear. Because y'all not addicted to the same things anymore. Y'all can't bond off of trauma. Y'all can't bond. And one person healing is not going to be another person healing. So if y'all not trying to heal together, y'all going to eventually grow apart. Because you going up, they going down. So them are the two things that's going to happen. Somebody going to elevate, somebody going to go down. And if you keeping these people here, they got to either elevate to your level. Or y'all not going to be able to be friends anymore. Because y'all going to see life in two totally different ways. And that happens. And I say all that to say like. Shout out to that brother Mozzie for, 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 you know, doing his inner healing and, and having the authority over himself and over his mind to say, you know what, I ain't even picking that up no more, bro. It's hard to do, but that ain't what I, what I want for my life. I don't want to be that. So I'm kick the cup. I'm just a messenger.